I received a letter from a parenting coach. She said, quote, I coach a mother whose 16-year-old daughter is a spoiled, entitled brat, not a rarity, and when her mother wouldn't buy her a car, she pitched a fit. She left the house. She tried to move in with her alcoholic, narcissistic father, cursing her mother the entire time, then tried to move in with some neighbors when that didn't work out. And she told the neighbors that the mother had thrown a table at her. See, it's really clear right off that this is a really selfish and drama-filled and victim-y child. So she's got to have a story to tell people because that's what she does to get attention. So she's gone from mom's house to dad's house, and she's got to explain how this is happening. So, well, mom threw a table at me. Didn't even happen. And I have heard this story almost to the letter many times, a kid behaving in this way. Many children are so entitled that they simply cannot believe. Watch them. They're, they're incredulous, like, you're kidding. They can't believe there isn't a way to manipulate people to get what they want. This can't be. The coach continues. The daughter is back home now due to some coaching that I gave my friend about how to interact with the daughter, and things are going better. But in part, this is because my friend lies to her to keep her happy. So your friend is afraid of her own daughter. Again, not uncommon at all, but that makes it impossible for the daughter to feel loved. Nobody can feel loved while they're being lied to. The coach says, they made an agreement that my friend, the mother, this is the coach talking about the mother and the daughter, that my friend, the mother, gets her night every week to go out on Fridays. Uh, she goes out and takes country western dance lessons with a group of friends at a country western bar. And the daughter gets her night to do what she wants on Saturdays, which mostly seems to involve doing stuff with her friends. And her mother's either available to drive her somewhere or she stays home so the daughter can have friends over at the house. The part where my friend lies, the mother, is that once the daughter is settled in doing what she wants to on Saturday night, my friend goes out dancing again, something that she loves to do. And she tells her daughter that she's going over to a girlfriend's house, both Friday and Saturday night. In other words, this lady's going out dancing two nights a week, and the daughter has no idea what the mother's doing. Now, it sounds kind of innocent, like, well, big deal. So mom makes up a story about where she goes. It's it's not like mom's responsible to the daughter. But here's what's happening. First, for reasons unknown, the mother feels some shame about going out dancing, perhaps something from childhood. It almost always is. So two, she lies to the daughter about it. Three, the lie makes the mother feel small. You don't lie to people and then feel honest and in integrity and whole and complete. No, the mother feels small around her daughter. She must feel threatened, in fact, by her daughter, or she wouldn't need to lie to her. Four, the daughter can feel her mother's lack of worth. And five, the daughter can't feel love from a woman who doesn't feel worthwhile herself. So do you see the consequences of telling a lie to a child? It it ends up in terrible places. The coach says, I'm not sure what she tells her on Friday nights, but e either way, no matter what the mom does tell the child, apparently it freaks the daughter out that her mother would e even consider going out to a bar to dance. Now, it is none of the daughter's business what the mother does. Really, none. But the mother has to tell her daughter what she's doing. Why? Because of the things that we just talked about. Because she feels small, because she feels less worthwhile, because she's intimidated, because all of that then affects the love that her daughter can feel. The lying is hurting both of them. 
Today, the coach says, I asked my friend if she's had a conversation with her daughter about what it is that is upsetting her about her mother going out dancing. So she recommended, the coach, that mom ask the daughter, what would bother you if I did go out dancing? This is a friend from my church singles group. There's nothing going on that her daughter needs to be worried about. It's not like her mom's going out and picking up guys and going to their apartment for the night. My friend said that her children just think that mothers don't do things like that. Parents can't go out and just have wild and crazy fun. And that their role is to just do stuff for the kids. That's pretty astonishingly entitled on the part of the daughter and has become increasingly common. There's another reason, this one, entitlement, for the, for the mother to tell the truth to the child. When mom lies, her daughter has her entitlement confirmed. In other words, even though the daughter doesn't know the mother's lying for sure, she knows something's off, and she can see the sense of intimidation in her mother's eyes when, mom, when the daughter says, oh, that's just not something parents do. She can see her mother flinch and pull into herself. That's a crazy, messy relationship that a child can dictate to a parent what they ought to be doing or ought not be doing. The coach says, and she said she's going to keep lying, the mother, so that she can get her daughter through the next two years before she goes to college without conflict. Oh, what a mistake for all the reasons we've been talking about. The coach said, I thought about saying, you are teaching her to lie, the daughter. Mm, not really, because their daughter doesn't really know mom is lying. She just knows that mom looks not worthwhile and nervous and anxious, and that in some way she can intimidate the mother. You can be sure that if she intimidates mom about going dancing, that the daughter uses her entitlement to get everything else she wants too. I mean, look at the arrangement in the beginning. The two negotiated, you can have your night out, mom, if I get my, my, my night out as though they were somehow peers or business partners. No, mom gets to do whatever she wants to do. And then the two of them can talk about what the daughter gets to do, but in the end, mom makes the decision. It is not, parenting is not a negotiation. Parenting is loving and teaching. One way, parent to child. The coach said, I sent her a link from Ridiculously Effective Parenting that said, your angry, impossible child, how you can help. When things were in crisis, I sent her the link when things were in crisis, and she seemed excited about it. But I don't know if she actually read it, and she seems to want to just manage her daughter by continuing to lie because it avoids conflict and it's easier. Do you have any suggestions on anything to say to my friend, or would you advise I back off because she's not listening? Well, this one's easy. I would say to the mother, and you can modify this any way you want to. I'm not telling you how to say it. I'm not telling this particular coach how to say it or anybody else how to say it to a friend. But I would say to mom, I'm trying to help you with your life so that you're happier. You've asked me to help you with your life. And so you can learn to love your daughter better. You've asked me to do that. You were brave not to give in to the demands to get a new car. That was good. But you're still not addressing the real underlying problem, which is that you feel so worthless that you have to lie to avoid your own daughter's disapproval. That's kind of insane. You can go dancing at a country western bar anytime you feel like it. That's up to you. I'm not telling you that you have to do or should do anything. But if you keep lying, how am I supposed to help you? Have an honest and open relationship, loving relationship with your daughter. I'm not refusing to help you. I'm stating that I can't help you because you're destroying the effects of my loving you by choosing to stay in a prison that your daughter keeps you in. And when she leaves home, and I assume that that's why you've talked about lying for two more years, uh, that she's going off to college or wherever, your daughter Think ahead. 
Think about her behavior up to this point. She will continue to hold you hostage. Daughter will ask you what you've been doing lately. She'll do it a lot. So what did you do today? And if there are things that you did that day that you think she'll disapprove of, you'll lie again to avoid her disapproval. Then, and the odds of this are very high, considering what you've told me already. Your daughter will continue to choose to stay home, it's the first choice, during college and possibly for the next 20 years because it's cheaper and because she knows she can manipulate you to get almost anything she wants. Or two, she'll fail in school because she's entitled and she'll find out that her professors aren't nearly as easy to manipulate as you and then she's back home again, like number one. Or three, she'll go to school and there will be an endless list of demands for money and other things to help her and you'll give in, which will further entitle your daughter and financially destroy you. You held the line on the car because, well, in great part, you couldn't afford it. But you give in on even telling her where you are. So she's, she has proven, your daughter has, that her entitlement intimidates you. In fact, the concept that she's entitled at all proves that you can be intimidated. Or four, the daughter will move in with you after she's gone to college, accompanied by a boyfriend or baby or both. I've seen these stories so many times that it's just predictable because you haven't developed a spine. You haven't learned to tell her no or that something's none of her business. You're trying to get your own daughter's approval. You want her to be your friend. Now, do you see where all this goes? End quote. That's what I would have said to the mom. Now, to, the, to everybody listening, see where all this goes? It happens over and over. So I'm not guessing. Mom really has to grow a spine and be a real mother. Now, I would conclude when I was talking to the mom the following way. Quote, so here's the deal. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. But if you keep lying to your daughter and whatever else you're doing to avoid disapproval, because it's a guarantee that there's a lot more to this story, I can't be involved in trying to help you. I will continue to talk to you only, now keep in mind I'm getting this letter from a coach. This isn't just a casual friend. I will keep talking to you only if you study the ridiculously effective parenting training and really study it where we can talk about it like regularly. And I get a confirmation that you've gotten the real ridiculously effective parenting training. I'd have to know, in other words, in order to coach somebody, I personally will not invest my time in somebody coaching them unless they're as interested in their happiness as I am. If I'm more interested than you are, something's wrong with this picture. I emphasize to any coach that it does no good to keep talking to someone when they don't do the hard stuff that's required to learn and grow. Listening to them complain, and this would be true not just for coaches, but for many of you with your friends. We listen to our friends complain and complain and complain. It only encourages their victimhood. They learn nothing, and we feel trapped. You, as a coach or somebody who's just helping a friend, have to be as firm with mom as I'm suggesting mom needs to be firm with the daughter. We have to learn how to spend our time. We have to learn when it's effective and abandon our efforts to help somebody learn something when they're just demonstrating clearly that they're not really invested in it. We spend our time where it makes a difference. We'll feel happier and we won't feel trapped. <laughs>